So today I would like to officially announce that Yummy R6 is coming to do a ride along with me. Hey guys, what's going on? So it's official, Yummy R6 is coming to do a ride along with me on Friday. So we've been coordinating for a while and I think uh, on Friday we're gonna do a dual vlog first and then I'm gonna take a nap before work and then uh, later that night he's gonna come and do a ride along with me. So this is Yummy's first ride along with a cop and it got me thinking. And a lot of you have asked me how to do a ride along with a particular department and like what to do, what not to do. Perfect idea for a video. Now keep in mind that every department has different requirements for a ride along. Some are really strict, some are pretty lax, and others don't allow you to do it at all. Now the last department that I was at was actually really lax about ride alongs, but thanks to yours truly, now they only allow people to ride for four hours maximum once a month. Oh God, Officer 401, what did you do? Well, I'm glad you asked. So a really good buddy of mine, he used to ride every single week, and sometimes he would ride like multiple times throughout the week. And anytime he rode, like he would ride the entire 12 hour shift. He would literally go into briefing with me and then I would drop him off at his car and go home. This guy was hilarious. Like we we always were cracking up the entire shift. Now it would be like three o'clock in the morning and we're just chilling, we're cruising, and there would be like this random dog that crosses the road and he would get on the microphone and just yell, meow. And this dog, these dogs always hauled ass. Like they would scat ass as soon as they heard that. <laughs> so anyway, the reason the policy changed, one night we had a fight call that there were supposed to be like 30 people in the middle of the road and it was in a really bad part of town. Of course it was a city so like the whole city was a bad part of town this was like a supercharged bad part of town it was a part of town where like mice had a carry permit cats had a like crack habit it, it was horrible so we get this call that 30 people are fighting in the road and when i arrived on scene my backup was like two minutes away so when i pulled up there was more like 50 people in the road and there was two separate groups of people fighting so i get out of my car i jump into one of the groups i grab one guy i throw him across the hood of my car and i handcuff him well of course my buddy wanted to get in on the action too so he jumps out he grabs the other guy and then we handcuff him now keep in mind my buddy's like 6'4 and 275 pounds I'm six feet, 220 pounds, so we're not small guys. It was very comical watching us together. So I ended up directing the units that were responding to the other group of people that were fighting. Long story short, we got the situation under control and the lieutenant that was working at the time shows up and he just like glares at both of us and drives away. It was one of those like, oh shit, here we go, like kind of moments. So a week passes by and he calls me into his office. Now keep in mind, I'll, I'll just say this lieutenant he doesn't like white people. Now, I'm a Heinz 57 mud, but he still didn't care for me. And that's fine, because the feeling was mutual. So long story short, he ends up riding me up for allowing my ride along to get out of the car. And I tried to explain to him that there were 50 fucking people out there, and uh, you know, I might need a hand. But he didn't care, he wasn't hearing of any of it. He already had the write up printed out and made me sign it. This guy was all about some yellow paper. If you even so much as like farted in briefing, he was gonna write you up. I got like a total of four write-ups from this jackass in like two years. And trust me, I could tell you guys a ton of stories about this guy, but I'm not gonna stoop to his level. So anyway, because my buddy got out with me on that call, that is the reason why the whole ride-along policy changed. And they really started enforcing this four hour limit every month. So if you guys are looking to do a ride along, there's a few things that you need to know. Number one, call your local department and see what their ride along policy is. Like I said, every department is different. So those of you asking me about ride along stuff, I don't know. You need to call your local department and ask them. For those of you that are under 18, you might need a parent to sign a waiver. Another thing is make sure to, uh, make sure to wear comfortable clothes. Um, I wouldn't show up in like sweatpants but just wear like some jeans and maybe a polo. Now, the most important thing to know about doing a ride along, if you don't hear anything else out of this video, pay attention to this. The most important thing, there are three types of officers that you're gonna ride with. There are officers who love having ride alongs like me. There are officers that uh, they don't really care one way or another whether you're there or not. And then there are officers who absolutely despise ride alongs. They want you to get in the car, shut your mouth, and get out as soon as possible. We call those assholes. And me personally, like I have always loved ride alongs, especially when it's somebody that's riding for the first time that's never done it before. I love having brand new ride alongs with me. I could talk about my job all day long. I love it. I've always loved teaching and training. So when someone rides with me, like I love teaching them the 10 codes, like different laws and stuff like that. And seeing it click in their mind, 
uh, is, is really cool to me. It's, it's very satisfying. Now, that being said, I do have a few pet peeves, and I'm sure this probably applies to other officers too. Number one, do not tell an officer when or when not to stop somebody. Don't be all like, ooh, there's a tail light out, let's go stop them. Don't be over anxious. Number two, don't try to talk over the police radio. If you hear the police radio going off, just stop whatever you're saying, let the officer listen, and then you can continue after that. We have to keep like constantly listening to the radio. We have to listen to see if like we're called or if somebody's in distress, they need backup, whatever. Like we always have to be paying attention anytime the radio keys up. Nothing is worse than hearing somebody talk about their great uncle's neighbor's friend's dog whose owner was a cop 100 years ago, all while dispatch is trying to give out important information. Number three, never get out of the car unless the officer tells you it's okay to do so. Number four, don't play on your phone the whole time. Now, if you're trying to get like pictures and video and stuff, like that's okay. But if you came to do a ride along and I look over and you're like trying to get Snapchat streaks, like to me, that's just disrespectful. If you're gonna ride, do it for the experience. Not to mention, I work night shift. And if I have somebody in the passenger seat with a bright ass phone, it's really distracting. Number five, because I couldn't come up with anything else, just use some common sense. Don't be a dick. You should be able to tell by the officer's body language whether something you're doing is like aggravating them or if you're like pulling their attention away from something they need to be doing. And like with me, as long as the radio is not going off, like you can ask me whatever question you want. In fact, the more questions you ask, the better it is because it's the more you're gonna learn, the more I can tell you know that you're interested in this and it just makes for a better overall experience. I always cheer up and get super happy when people come to ride with me, but not, I mean, not every officer's like that. I've also had a ton of you that have sent me emails asking me if you can come to me and do a ride long. Okay, here's the deal. I hate to do this to you guys, but no, and I'll explain why. So it kind of goes without saying that the internet has a ton of creeps and you guys don't see a lot of the comments that are filtered out because either I banned somebody from the page or because of the filter that I set up for the channel, it catches a lot of the crap. But yes, I have a lot of haters. I know, right? It's hard to believe a cop might have a hater. So unless you're like some big YouTuber and we've been professionally collaborating, those are about the only circumstances I'm going to allow a ride along. It sucks it has to be like that because I wish I could have every one of you ride with me, but unfortunately that is the reality. So anyway guys, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. Uh, like I said, I'm really excited to have Yummy R6 down here. Um, I think this is going to make for a very interesting dual vlog, and uh, I think this is going to be a, a really badass ride along. And I, I told Yummy, I told him, I was like, you know, we're going to find something to get into. Like, there, we will be going lights and sirens at some point. Guys, I appreciate the support. I hope you are looking forward to this dual vlog. I can't record vlogs while I'm on duty, uh, but that doesn't mean Yummy can't, so I'm sure he's going to get some good footage. So anyway, guys, I hope you have a great night. I'm going to go home and edit as fast as possible. Uh, I don't usually film this late, but... Um, I came up with this idea and I wanted to get on the road. So I'm going to go home and edit. I hope you guys are excited as I am. I can't wait to push out this content and uh, I'll keep you updated with everything that's going on. Thanks again for the support guys and I will see you soon.